Welcome to episode 18 of the series Philosophy Unveiled by the author Lane Friesen. I'm Rachel and I'm doing the reading today. In the last episode, we demonstrated that the brain is capable of discovering science. We saw that the scientific method involves a kind of cascading analysis through three critical loops. Observation Reflection and intuition. We examined the interaction of these circuits with other loops, such as thinking and understanding. We also introduced three distinct ways in which this processing is coordinated. First, there is the reason loop and its consciousness. This gathers and coordinates the results of independent cognition in the various strategies that are represented by the differing cognitive styles, and it formulates the result into a speech stream. Reason, therefore, needs words in order to think. We suggested that reason is ruled by facilitator thought. Then we introduced common sense and suggested that it is formulated within the Weltanschauung, or worldview, circuit. This Weltanschauung loop provides the mind with an updated model of the external world, so that it can adapt thought and action to altered conditions. We saw that Weltanschauung depends strongly upon an ongoing teacher understanding and mercy identification. When these elements are missing, then the mind becomes very inflexible. Finally, we suggested that both reason and common sense interact with being. This being, as we have presented it thus far, comes in two flavors. Kinship is one variant. A good example of being that is based in kinship might be citizenship in some nation state. For instance, my nationality is Canadian. That's part of my kinship-based being. The unique thing about kinship is that it is relatively insensitive to the size of the kinship-based social grouping. Suppose, for example, that we placed 100 Canadians in a room and then separated them into two groups, each with 50 Canadians. It wouldn't make any difference to the individuals themselves. They'd still all remain equally Canadian. Or suppose that we formed a club of bird watchers. Let's say it had 100 members. Then we split the group into two and moved them apart. We'd now have two sets of bird watchers, each with 50 members. Both groupings could still have the same kinds of club meetings and still go out to watch the same sorts of birds. It wouldn't make any difference to the members at all, as far as their bird watching was concerned, if they were part of the larger group or one of the two smaller offshoots. That's how kinship works. Let's look now at an example of being that is based in Dasein. In contrast to kinship, Dasein cares very much about diversity, and thus also about size. We might imagine the city of Vancouver, British Columbia, for instance, divided into two by an impassable barrier. It would be a disaster, a resident's home might be in one half, and his employer in the other. He would either be homeless or out of a job. If hospitals happened to end up on one side of the division, then the people in the other half would have health care challenges. That's how it works with the being of Dasein. Whenever an interlocking Dasein group is split, then the Dasein or being of each member is degraded for Dasein interaction is based in the mutual beneficial exchange of specialized abilities. So let's put it together. The waking mind is integrated, first of all, by reason and its consciousness. The logic of this reason is expressed in speech and is consistent with science. The reasonableness of reason is adjusted in turn by Weltanschauung and its common sense. 
Finally, upon a foundation of consciousness and common sense, being develops. This being may base itself in a commonality of kinship. Nationalism here would be a good example. Being, in contrast, may develop further into an interpersonal division of labor, and involve Dasein with its globalized division of labor. That brings us finally to the topic for this episode. I'd like to look at the economic implications of Dasein-based being. Now, Martin Heidegger indicates that being always involves a transfer of data from CL to FL. He calls this flow of data an assertion, and he suggests that it can lead to speech. What happens when kinship takes a stand on its being by moving information from CL to FL? Well, let's suppose that a Canadian hockey team won a gold medal in hockey at the Olympics. If a Canadian were hiking in the woods and he heard the news, then he would probably cheer. If 50 Canadians were watching the event together in a room, then they also might all cheer. These many Canadians would of course all be taking an individual stand on their being when they cheered, but they would be doing so in a manner that made the size of the group relatively unimportant. That's kinship. It's very different with Dasein and its division of labor. Suppose, for instance, that I wish to take a stand on my being by putting my words into a book. I will require readers who do not know what I know. Factories must construct a computer for people like me. Power companies will need to supply electricity. For every person like me who decides to write, there must in fact be multiple thousands of individuals with skills that are very different. The being of Dasein, unlike kinship, thrives as diversity grows. Any schism in a Dasein-oriented group can easily be world or Weltanschauung shattering to the Daseins of those disparate individuals who make up the social grouping. Their separate beings or Daseins may also dissolve and disappear. Parenthetically, if we are familiar with sociology, then we might link at this point to Emil Durkheim and his distinction between mechanical solidarity and organic solidarity. It is precisely our current distinction between kinship and Dasein that he is discussing. Okay, let's examine the being of Dasein more closely. We'll start with a point that I introduced in the last episode. Left hemisphere contributor CL and right hemisphere contributor CR always take a stand as a pair. That is, whenever CL sends information to FL, then CR quickly sends data also to FR. What is the significance of this pairing of CL and CR? Well, it turns out that a CL stand on its being, or a data transfer from CL to FL, is seen by the mind as an IF. In mathematics, an IF is always followed by a THEN, and it is precisely this THEN which is the function of CR. The resulting IF-THEN structure, if we supply the correct set of ANDs and ORs, turns out to define a logic processor. And linguists tell us that all of speech is based in very simple logic. Five operators, eight inferences, and a set of replacements. So, if we wished to turn to mathematics, we could then work out how the mind formulates speech.